We're going to get to the bottom of shit, folks. We're going to learn some things. He's going to enlighten us. Are you ready? Set. Oh. Joe Rogan Podcast. Check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day. Joe Rogan Podcast by night. All day. All right. We are here with uh, Dr. Goswami. Thank you very much for doing this. I, I really appreciate it. Um, I've seen a lot of your videos online. I read a lot of your, your work, and it is some very, very fascinating and, for a person as dumb as I am, confusing stuff. The idea of quantum mechanics and the, just when someone uses the word quantum, do you find that a lot of folks, their just eyes glaze over? Well, not anymore because, you know, I, the most complex, one of the most complex concepts of quantum physics is quantum leap. It's a discontinuous transition and that gives you an idea of how foreign it is to a mind which thinks in the Newtonian fashion. You know, motion is continuous and quantum leap is discontinuous. But it's used everywhere today. Everybody knows, all, right. you know, if anything unusual happens, people say, took a quantum leap. So uh, that has a... What do they mean by that? I think they just mean like a big jump. I think they just mean a big jump. Yeah, if I don't... they knew that it's a discontinuous jump, they probably would hesitate. <laughs> what, is I... that, what does that exactly mean by a discontinuous jump? Well, um, however much surprising to your rational mind that is, just suspend your disbelief. Imagine that the electron is here and then the electron is there in the other orbit. Nothing in between in space and time. Since all these are concrete objects. We have become used to them as concrete objects. But they begin as possibilities in a transcendent domain. So to break it down for the layperson, essentially the lowest form or the smallest form of the universe that we can measure when we get to subatomic particles, when we can look at subatomic particles they defy the laws of physics. They exist in the same space at the same time in two different places. They can be both moving and still, and they can teleport themselves. We have to realize these objects can be shown to be at two places at the same time, but only in possibility. <laughs> No, but That's, that should simplify. I, you have to think about it. I can't. As I'm trying. I just broke my brain. <laughs> uh, of course, of course, because the word possibility is not familiar to you. Yes. Because, you know, they're a little bit strange. What is possibility? But we know what possibility is. Right. Possibilities are things that glimpse at us, but nothing that we can put our finger to it. Our <clears throat> reality begins with uh, these possibilities. Uh, possibility of an electron being anywhere in the room. Our knowledge is limited. We only know that it's possible to find the electron here, there, at the ceiling. So something that is a wave of possibility, being having the capacity of being everywhere. So this is a kind of theory that just boggles your mind. So when the picture says that, well, they start as possibility and then they become actuality, we have no option but to accept it. It, 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 it sounds strange. I mean... Anytime you're talking about supernature, most people would say, oh, well, you are in Wu land. But you are not in Wu land. We are in quantum reality. Well, That's quantum right. reality is Wu land. It's just <laughs> also real. That's it is also real. The, 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 there is no debate. So that becomes tables. That becomes Dr. Goswami. Yes. That becomes the laptop. That, That's, be that is a real trippy thing to try to wrap your head around real trippy thing that I, when you go the smaller you go the more it becomes magic it becomes it becomes something that doesn't exist in in, in our rational world and also when nobody is observing us including ourselves like when we sleep deep sleep nobody is observing me where am i i am only a possibility because i'm a macro object my wave of possibility, and right, same thing happens with waves of possibility. We do tend to expand when, as soon as you go to sleep, as a wave of possibility. Why creative? Because this movement also suggests something fantastic, that there are new possibilities, and if we could capture those new possibilities and make them manifest. Forth and back. So the whole world, 
we really do live in like a hologram. That we have discovered a new world of potential from which our ordinary reality is created. So ordinary reality is not as fixed as we thought it was. We go more and more in the quantum domain, in the realm of expansion into new possibility that where it has not expanded before. And then quantum physics came along and we realized that in between our thinking, these objects, thoughts, they are possibilities of meaning, they're waves. So thing happens with the thoughts, they expand in meaning, become waves of multiple meaning, possibilities of multiple meaning, multiple meaning, expanding, expanding, expanding. The more they expand, the more meaning this packet of possibility will contain. And so you have a better idea, better possibility, better probability of, of capturing a new meaning. Because if you have a bigger possibility pool to choose from, obviously your chance of being creative is greater. This is the quantum leap, a discontinuous change from possibility into actuality. So the idea is that the imagination is a quantum realm. Imagination takes us to the realm of possibility. If we can do it from consciousness, conscious imagination is still a stepping stone to the doing of possibility. But if we expanding wave-like, becoming bigger and bigger pools of possibility for consciousness to choose from. And when we choose, a new possibility might arise or a whole combination of new possibilities might arise. Very interesting way to break down creativity that I've never heard before. Absolutely. This is um, it's very complex because there is too much of it. The, yeah, the creation process has always been fascinating to me. And I, I've been saying this for a while that I think we, without the human imagination, there would be nothing. Well, yes, and, and now... But quantum, yeah, we look at it frivolously. Uh, but, but quantum physics is taking us a little bit further. Than mm. this. I mean, it, it, imagination is a good starting point, as I said. But imagination is still in our conscious thought. So um, thoughts can become more and more and more and more weird. But as soon as it gets into the unconscious, unconscious stuff, more you imagine, the imaginary stuff will interact with other imaginary t stuff. The thoughts will mix and this mixing waves together will produce patterns of what you call patterns of interference of waves. You were mentioning superposition, waves superpose, and creating many, many more new possibilities than before. And one of these possibilities may very well be brand new. That thinking where if we take advantage of the quantum domain, the domain of possibility, where uh, possibility interacting with possibility creates up completely new stuff that has never manifested before. I've heard you say that you believe that consciousness is non-local. Right. What do you mean by that? Well, it, most intriguing, you know, this is, this is like voodoo. This is really like voodoo. <laughs> this, this, we're now getting into real cracks of the most surprising thing in quantum physics is called non-local. Signals are local, going through space, taking... And how do, they, how do they measure that these pro particles that there is no signal because the communication took place faster than the speed of light. So what did they measure? Like when, when you're measuring information that transfers between two particles, what are they measuring exactly? Well, uh, the experiment is a little bit complex, probably. Flip, <laughs> this is where things get a little complicated. In case you're wondering... Now, how does that correlate to non-local consciousness? How they correlate to non-local consciousness is possibly the object is here somewhere. That's all we knew. We could only talk about possibility and probability. There's a lot of uh, ancient texts that connect yoga with cannabis use, yoga with uh, hashish use, and, and, and even eating cannabis. I'm what not you, familiar with this one. You're not familiar with Oh, look at you, you sly devil with that <laughs> smile on your face. Someone's got a reputation to maintain. Uh, no, I'm, um, I'm, well, I'm, I'm, I don't really. No, not from that point of view, you know. Do you have any experience at all in uh, psychedelic I, I do. alkaloids I, I compounds? Do a, I do a little. I certainly yeah. have tried. Um, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's in this state. It, it's, it's not against the law. To oh, you mean marijuana, that. yes. You have taken Very mild uh, marijuana. one. So, I was going to ask you about... No, uh, no, it's not so mild. You know, mm -hmm. in, in, oh, in yeah, you one tell time, me. In time, and one time uh, I got <laughs> what is called Sansanim or something. Very, Sensimilia? Very, oh, look uh, at you, old school uh, devil. Uh, exactly. So getting many, many more new possibilities than before. So a friend of mine comes from uh, Washington with this oh, important stuff. Oh, those dudes in Washington right? don't play games. Exactly. Seattle's in the house. 
<laughs> so, 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 so we, we take this stuff with him and we put it in cookies, right? Oh, yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't take effect for, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, minutes. 20 minutes. Nothing is happening. So we said, well, let's go to dinner. This is a classic story. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is indeed. So we, we go to dinner and all of a sudden I'm just eating my first course. I'm looking at the uh, looking at the uh, lights of the city from a window, and it starts exploding. <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> so uh, even though I've said it a million times, when you eat cannabis, it has a completely different psychoactive effect. When, I, when you you're eat, you're telling it. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, didn't eat anything. More new possibilities. The, the more, possibilities yeah. are impossible. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this was before the before the uh, discoveries of quantum physics that I went through. But, oh, really? This, this is pre quantum. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, the, but the point is that love lie down. I mean, the, the stuff right. had an enormous effect. Mine too. I mean, oh, I yeah. was you know, oh, clearly listen. under it, and then driving under it. You know, this is what wow. had that. It, it just it's impossible to gauge. Time, how time is going. Time gets <laughs> slow, time gets fast. <laughs> did, it change, right? did, did it change your ideas of the quantum world? Pot brownies? <laughs> well, or like? well, well, I did connect it to quantum. <laughs> but, the, but the point is that love, <laughs> but, but, the, but the point is that love got weak and therefore right. passed out. Don't, don't pay any attention to her. I'll take care of it. I know her just walks away completely innocently. And pot cookies? What was it? A cookie or a brownie? What was it? He was taking with us. Oh, so he was probably high. He thought you were out. When cannabis is processed by the liver, it produces something called 11 hydroxy metabolite, which is uh, approximately four to five times more psychoactive than THC. So that's why it has that insane effect. It's not just insane, it's an alien effect that you don't get when you smoke pot. Eating it is a very, very different experience. Mm -hmm. And you could easily overdo it. And it looks yeah. like. Maybe 